temperatures coming up as First at Four continues. Mountain News First at Four continues. A group of researchers at the University of Kentucky are working to improve technology that captures carbon dioxide from the atmosphere more efficiently. Anna Berniston spoke with the researchers about how the device works and its importance. UK Center for Applied Energy Research began their carbon capture program all the way back in 2006. Since then, they've been continuing to improve their technology, and one research group is aiming to capture carbon dioxide directly from the atmosphere. Using a $1.3 million grant from the U.S. Department of Energy's National Energy Technology Laboratory, the research team is creating a more cost-efficient and scalable technology to capture carbon dioxide. With their device, air is brought into a special electrochemical solvent that then captures the carbon dioxide and processes it into hydrogen. While they're still in the early stages of development, this technology could potentially be used on vehicles, industrial buildings, or even simply put alongside other renewable energy sources. You can directly hook it up with uh, solar cells, renewables, uh, where it's just a standalone device. You don't need to run any kind of uh, extensive infrastructure. Our device directly integrates with uh, solar cell DC power. Along with creating the technology to capture carbon dioxide directly from the air, the team is also engineering ways for utilization and storage of that carbon dioxide once it's captured. In Lexington, meteorologist Adam Berniston, WKYT. Two organizations are coming together to help one Floyd County family make some upgrades. The Christian Appalachian Project is working with CESO to help the Lafferty family make some home repairs. From new flooring to windows and a ramp, the crews on site are working to give the family a sense of security. Those involved say it's about coming together to give back, bringing workers from several states to be part of the mission. We have um, people coming that have came from all of our uh, different offices. I think we represent seven of our offices here today. And it's a way for us to give back to the community at the same time get to know each other in our other offices better by serving together. The crews are working all week before passing off the project to the next crew in the weeks to come. We'll hear more about the efforts coming up at 530. The owners of a Laurel County petting zoo are left worried about their baby kangaroo who was stolen from its pen. The owners of Hillview Stables in London went to bottle feed their 10-month-old kangaroo when they saw that he was missing from the pen. They soon realized that someone had taken him and a makeshift pouch the owners had made for him out of the pen and left the property. They estimate he was taken sometime after 7 p.m. Sunday night. Yeah, he will show up somewhere or somebody will see him unless they take him out of state or something because nobody else around here has a kangaroo. So, I don't know. It's sad. I don't understand why anybody do that. It's just the way the world is now. Hillview Stables owner Rick Gregory says he is offering a $500 reward for whoever brings the kangaroo back. After a dreary start to this Tuesday, some of us are starting to see a little bit of sunshine out there this afternoon. Not going to bring those temperatures up any, though. London Corbin Airport, now you see the blue skies back with us. Also a plane there in the foreground, so not a bad day to fly. It is a bit chilly, though, outside. Those temperatures sticking in those low to middle 50s around the area. Some of us having trouble getting 250 right now. Right at 50, Harlan, Hazard, Pikeville, Logan. Some of those spots were actually below 50 degrees not too long ago. So it's definitely a day to wrap up out there. And you can thank cloud cover for that. We've had it around all day long as our low pressure continues to move on up to the north and east and get out of our hair but not so much for the folks in the Northeast. They're dealing with a big Nor'easter right now, but we should start to clear out as we head into tonight. And what that means for us is we are getting cold. That's right, mid thirties for overnight lows tonight. And there are some spots that I think could get down to near freezing. I'll have the details on that. And when unfortunately rain returns to the forecast coming up in just a little bit, Steve. 
All right, Evan, thank you. Heavy drinking has become much more common during the pandemic, so much so that the need for liver transplants has soared. That's according to a new study published in JAMA Network Open. Researchers found the number of people who got a liver transplant or were waiting on a waiting list due to alcoholic hepatitis was 50% higher than what was forecast. It often takes years of heavy drinking to cause the condition in which the liver stops processing alcohol, but sometimes it can happen after a short period of excess. Vaping marijuana has drastically increased in popularity among teens. A new study published in JAMA Pediatrics says the number of school-aged youths vaping marijuana doubled between 2013 and 2020. Older teens seem to be most likely to vape pot. One in three high school seniors reported doing it, which was the highest number in the group. A trend worrying experts as teens say they prefer vaping cannabis extract over dried marijuana. That extract contains much more THC than marijuana plants, leading to more intense highs. Executives from YouTube, TikTok, and Snapchat were grilled by senators about what they're doing to keep children safe online. The hearing followed testimony from a former Facebook data scientist who says Instagram's photo sharing service appears to seriously harm teens. Snapchat executive Jennifer Stout was questioned by Senator Amy Klobuchar, who shared the story of 19-year-old Devin Noring of Minnesota. Noring died after taking fentanyl-laced Percocet that he bought on Snapchat. We have deployed proactive detection measures to get in ahead of what the drug dealers are doing. They are constantly evading our tactics. I think there's other ways to do this too as creating uh, liability when this happens. So maybe that'll make you work even faster so we don't uh, lose another kid. There are at least two bills senators are working on to protect U.S. children. One would make it illegal for social media companies to track a young user's data. The other would make social media companies legally responsible if a child is exploited on an app. People in bigger cities have been doing it for years, but now callers in parts of 35 states and one U.S. territory must now dial 10 digits to make a local call. The change comes as the nation prepares to roll out a new 988 call service to reach the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. It will work like the emergency 911 does now, but several area codes use 988 as their first three numbers of seven. So as of last Sunday, callers must dial their three-digit area code first. The new 988 service will be available nationwide next July. Callers can still reach the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline by dialing 1-800-237-8255. We want to go to some breaking news now. Just in, a panel of health advisors has officially endorsed kid-sized doses of Pfizer's COVID vaccine. That moves the U.S. even closer to beginning vaccinations in children ages 5 to 11. A Food and Drug Administration advisory panel voted unanimously with one abstention. If the FDA authorizes the kid-sized doses, there's still one more step. Next week, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention will have to decide whether to recommend the shots and which youngsters should get them. Pike County is holding its trick-or-treat night on Thursday, but the city of Pikeville is already preparing. Many of the city's first responders will be out and about patrolling Pikeville neighborhoods. The Pikeville Police Department is also reminding people of all the ways to keep their kids safe. Correctly fitted costumes, high visibility accessories such as reflective tape or a small light, safe trick-or-treating spots, and other precautions should be practiced this Halloween, especially as more people will be out trick-or-treating probably than ever before. We have a lot of kids out trick-or-treating, especially if the weather's decent at all. You're going to have a good turnout, and since COVID knocked it out last year, you're going to have a lot more people turn out. Officer Khan also suggests following CDC or health department guidelines regarding COVID-19. We'll have more Halloween safety tips from Pikeville PD tonight at 6. But next year on First at 4, it's been a tough growing season for many pumpkin farmers across the country. What that could mean for your pumpkin picking. And as we head out there tonight, we've got some chilly temperatures on the way before more rain as well. I'll have those details coming up. WYMT News app offers alerts on breaking stories.